Hi, everybody. My name is Alexis Jennings, and today I'm going to be talking about web analytics. Um, so in a nutshell, web analytics is basically just using data to really optimize the web experience for users. Um, and as a de developer, it's actually really good to at least know a little bit about what web analytics is because um, the different methods that you choose to, to analyze data can really help you, like I said, to op optimize your web applications and your websites. Um, so yeah, so let's get started. Um, first, I wanted to talk about a little bit of what just general data analytics is. Um, and that's because it's actually a really broad topic and you can really dive into different types of it. Um, but for the most part, data analytics is just referring to gathering and collecting information so that you can examine it and study different patterns and whatnot. Um, and like I said, it's typically used in, in businesses to really help make future decisions about a product or about um, a service or just a general business model. So it's something you definitely will run into as a developer or at least be a part of. Um, data analytics can be fall into very different categories. It could be descriptive, diagnostic, prescriptive, or predictive. Um, and these are all very interrelated, but as far as like what they mean is that you can tell you about something. It can tell you um, what's wrong with like maybe a web page or something that's going on. Um, it can prescribe some type of of remedy for something that is going on, um, and it can be predictive, and this has to do a lot with like big data and stuff that's going on as well. Um, some other related concepts to data analysis, like I said, it's pretty general. It's a very wide area, but, um, but there are also like sub areas of that, one of which being mobile analytics, and mobile an analysis is basically the study of, um, of, you know, just like web data, or sorry, my bad, the study of mobile data. And when you think about it, everyone has a phone. Most people have smartphones. So you're usually using that phone to access web anyway. So this has a lot of crossover to web analysis and web data, too. Um, another one is social media data, um, or social media web analytics. And this right here is actually studying different data that comes from social websites. Um, so this means gathering data on user perceptions or something that they're thinking about, as opposed to some actual um, like user actions that you would normally discover with web analytics and um, other type of data analytics. Um, but today I'm going to be talking about specifically web analytics because it's more directly concerned of what we've been doing. Um, and that just focuses on studying online and offline behavior um, and different web data that comes from that too. So how can it be used? Um, like I said, in today in the tech industry, web analytics is usually used to really help drive a company's business model. Um, and improve product efficiency. So effectively, web analytics really just helps you to measure how effective your product is um, in terms of its purpose. Um, so first, it could be used to, to decode and understand website traffic or user flow. And this just means how users are getting to your website or how um, they're going, what else they're going to after they leave your website. So this can include certain data and stuff like, um, like search engines or like direct links or referrals to your website too. Uh, another way that it's used is to just track user activity in general. Um, and that's basically what a user is doing while they're on your web page. Um, web analysis can also be used to determine your website performance. Um, and that's basically how your pages are behaving, um, anything from like load time or even to you know, like how fast a browser is actually parsing information. Um, another way that it's used is really huge actually is to really to improve the design and the user experience of a website or a product. Um, and this is, this is a big thing about you know, UX design or UD design, um, is how to really improve the user experience when they come to your page or when they use your product. And then another way it's used is to help build predictive, predictive models. Um, and like I said, this has to do with big data and machine learning, which I'll touch on just a little bit briefly towards the end of the presentation. Little examples are um, ways that can be used is one, to discover suspicious activity or vulnerabilities. Um, and people don't know that you know, web analysis can actually be used to help address vulnerabilities in your web page. Um, and this can do something directly with like SQL injections or, um, or like infected web shell access. Um, and with web shells, what, what they are, they're tags that can basically, basically be put into your code so that people can give you um, or you can get remote access to whatever it is you're trying to get access to. Um, and this just you know, leaves your data or whatever you're, you're housing on your server, leaves it open to certain vul vulnerabilities. And in that way, um, you know, web, basically, web analysis can help you kind of discover what those vulnerabilities might be. 
Um, another way is that it can help optimize your web searches. And uh, this is pretty straightforward. It's about you know, trying to find how you can more accurately um, do matching of keywords and phrases. And that's both internally on your web page and also um, other web pages that are linking to you as well. Um, it can help you personalize uh, your site based on user traffic or user activity. So this, again, has to do with more of UX and UI design. Um, and it can help you kind of figure out how you know, maybe someone comes to your page and they're having trouble navigating around. Um, like they keep clicking in between and out of pages and other, other different routes. Um, you can really look at that data and kind of see, okay, how can we better organize this so that our web page is more efficient and more user friendly. Um, and then another way is predictive, predictive metrics. Um, so, you know, something like you might hear this a lot of like um, businesses will try and use data to figure out how likely someone is to buy a product they bought before or how likely someone is in a certain area to purchase a certain product because um, it really just helps to, to make sure that their, their business or their product is being used more efficiently um, and it saves them resources as well. All right, so data analysis process. So um, this is actually like a condensed version that I've made simply because there's plenty of types of different analytics um, and different reasons that you use a, a specific process. So with that being said, um, if you were to search or do a search on this, you might find a very, very, very involved process um, diagram. Um, but what I've done is I basically collected all this down into what are the main takeaways based on um, just web analysis or ones that you will see pretty uniformly across different types of web or data analytics. Um, the first and foremost is collecting the data. So obviously you need data to study it. So um, you can use whatever method you want, and I'll talk about a couple of methods after this. But um, yeah, the first part is just obviously getting that data um, so you can use it later. Second part of the process is uh, taking that data and shaping it into information. So you might be sorting through all this data and be like, okay, well, what am I gonna do with like all this data? you got to pick out certain ones that are important, ones that are actually um, relevant to what you're looking for, and then shape that into, into information, which you can use for something else. Um, another one, the third step, is determining key metrics. And this is basically just deciding, like, what are the takeaways from what I've seen from the information that I've put together? Um, and in businesses, this is typically used to, as, like, a mile marker, um, where you're really trying to measure what your, what your product or what your implementation is doing. Um, and uh, one of the key words is uh, developing a key performance indicator, which is essentially a, like a long-term business model or plan that you've made based on the collected and processed data. And the fourth step is formulating a strategy. So we have all this stuff, we form this information, we have our goals, now we just have to go and base, uh, make a key strategy based on the previous steps and based on all the information we do have. All right, so what kind of data can be collected? I'm going to go over this a little quickly just because not much, sure how much time we have. But uh, for the most part, um, we have things like page views and visits, visitors, users, hosters. Um, that's like domains and like geographical locations of people who are accessing your site. Um, you can also do keyword like search engines um, and then the devices. So you can actually look up um, like the browsers and operating systems that people are using too. Um, and then file types, which is like tracking like downloads and file extensions and other stuff that's related. Um, data sources, you can get it from HTTP requests. You can get it from uh, servers and networks. And the reason being you can get this data is because it's actually needed to, to complete um, request transmissions. Something like the IP address of requesters is something that you can pick up. Um, and you can also get application level data, which is generated and, pop and processed by, uh, by application programs. All right, so data collection. So two main uh, data collection methods are web file analysis and page tagging. Um, and these are the two ones that I've run into a lot. And basically with web, web file analysis, um, it's typically just used because with web servers, you can actually, um, like, you know, they're used to like store and process and serve up web pages. So you can take data directly from those log files and use that for data analytics as well. Um, and then uh, the second part is, page tagging, which is actually um, embedded JavaScript tags that uh, can trap web, web activity and get that back to you as well. Um, and then I have some honorable mentions at the bottom, which I'll talk about a little bit later if you want to. Okay, so log analysis. As I said before, um, web server receives a request and creates a log entry. Um, and then you can get different information from networks and devices and servers, and you can also 
Um, it also provides a chance for increased security monitoring for that suspicious web activity. Um, and then it can also be stored into a database for future reporting and analysis as well. Um, and this is just a code example. Um, this is like example data. Um, and then this is an example of, um, of different like data capturing. Um, and with this example, they use, um, they use um, Python, uh, which shows that yeah, you can do data analysis in various different languages. Um, and they also use the pandas, which is an open source like library that works with Python as well, specifically for data analysis and data structuring. Um, and this is just the second part of that as well, if you want to take a look. All right, page tagging. So this is more client-side data. Um, it's collected directly from the end user. Um, and it's QuickTime data reporting. And it gives you uh, a variety of different uh, variables that, be that can be collected that are a little bit different than web, web file analysis. Um, and it's JavaScript based, so you can basically just drop a piece of code or a tag in, and then you can collect that data on the back end however you choose to. And this is an example of, of Google Analytics being put in. And the top part is the actual like, analytics code, um, and the second part is Tag Manager to help you kind of fi figure out what kind of tags that you're looking for as well, and that can be customized too. Um, all right, so web blogging versus page tagging. Um, I'll let you just look over this for a little bit. So each of them has its own uh, advantages. Um, and for the most part, web blogging can gather mass amounts of different information, which can be harder to kind of sift through, which makes page tagging way more, um, I guess, uh, readable or way more usable for those who are just building their own stuff. Um, but page tagging, too, has its own, its own um, disadvantages as well in a sense that it doesn't get as much information um, or it's getting a different type of information. Okay. I'm going to skip this part as well. <laughs> All right, so available technologies. Um, you can have web-based web -based, um, technologies, software-based technologies, big data language technologies like uh, R and Python, um, and then mobile um, analytics technologies. Um, something like SDKs, which are software development kits, and those typically um, are a way to help you collect data from mobile and then send it to your collection service, where you can then use that to analyze it. All right. So big data, sorry I didn't go over it as much, but for the most part, it's definitely really huge in a sense that, um, that predictive analysis is something that companies are heading toward a lot more, simply because, like I said, it, it helps them save resources and it helps them maximize the efficiency of what they're doing. Um, and I just encourage you definitely to look into it some more because if you, it doesn't matter if you're working at a bigger or a smaller company, it's something you can implement just as an individual or as a small development team um, now that there are a lot more tools out there that will help you do that. All right, so in conclusion, web analytics um, can definitely, as a developer, help you paint a picture and overview of how users are interacting and using what you're making. Um, secondly, the merging of machine learning and web analytics is something that's going to be really popular or is, or is really popular. Um, so it's something that can, that can really help you um, take that data and, and uh, give you a capacity basically to have more accurate and predictive data results, which in turn will help you develop better products. Um, and then thirdly, as a developer, just in general, it's really valuable to understand what web analytics does or data analytics does simply because um, it gives you a broader insight of the product that you're building. And um, by default, you know, in an agile development, environment, data analysis is really, really important in making decisions, both in design and functionality. Um, so it really affects how you build a product as a developer as well. All right. Thank you.